All right, everybody, welcome to Freelancer School. I am Mike Vulcan, lead instructor of Freelancer Masterclass, and today we are joined with Philip Morgan. He helps implementers become advisors. He's also the author of the Positioning Manual for Technical Firms. Welcome to the show. Thanks so much, Mike. Glad to be here. So you give great insight onto how freelancers and consultants can specialize and position themselves, which is super important. Uh, what are some actionable tips our freelancers can take with them today in regards to how to position themselves? I think the first is to understand why you're doing it. You can do it to get a quick marketing win, or you can do it to set yourself up for a lifetime of cultivating deep expertise. So if you're in it for a quick marketing win, that's fine. Um, no matter what your goal is, you need to figure out, you need to understand yourself. So are you a risk taker? Are you more entrepreneurial or are you looking for just a relatively safe way to make your business better? So what drives you? Is it uh, people? Is it trying to increase the profitability of your business? Or is it a love for some platform? Like you just love being an illustrator and working in some you know, technology platform. That all influences how you will decide how to specialize. Once you have that understanding of yourself, um, I think the, the easiest way to think about this is to ask yourself, where do I have a head start? If I'm somewhat risk averse, that's probably how you're going to specialize. If you're a bit more entrepreneurial, a bit more risk seeking, then you can say, you know, uh, I have no experience working with these people, but when I say these people, I mean something like, let's say you just love, uh, manufacturing or sure. the idea of manufacturing. Um, then you're going to say, I love these people. I have no track record, no history, no credibility, no access. I don't care. I'm going to specialize in serving them. You can do those sorts of things if you're more risk-seeking. Those, I would say, are some of the, the most fundamental basic things you can think about to prepare yourself to make this decision of how to specialize. Okay. And what does it exactly mean to position yourself? Are you comparing yourself to uh, your competition out there? Is that what you're referring to? Easiest way to think about a market position in the world of services, not products, is as a reputation. It is what you are known for. Most of us have some sort of local microscopic reputation among the people who know us. Positioning is, you know, achieving a market position, building a market position is developing a reputation among people who don't know you, who can discover you and seek you out for something that you're known for. So that gets into how you market yourself, but the basic idea is that you become the go-to person for something. Okay, and in Freelancer Masterclass, we talk about branding, right? So um, should this come before or after you determine what kind of brand you should be as a freelancer or consultant? The deeper you get into those two topics, the more they start to look alike. <laughs> so okay. we'll simplify this by Fair saying, enough. this is the sort of decision-making you do with branding. It's very similar. It's being intentional about how you want to be known. Okay. Understood. That makes a lot of sense. So also, you're, you're a visionary. I can tell by looking at your website and your blog. Um, I am categorized as a visionary too with all those self-assessment tests. And I noticed something fascinating on your website. You have a section uh, titled Ideas I'm Researching, um, which I would love to kind of copy you and do that, but I'm not going to. Uh, I do have an Evernote app of about 25 to 30 validated business ideas, meaning I've researched them and they will make money if somebody implements them. Um, I find that fascinating that you've publicly posted it on your website. So most entrepreneurs don't have the guts to do that. Um, why did you decide to do this? And, and can you outline a couple of ideas um, that you have on your website right now for our freelancers who haven't seen your website yet? The main problem with the business you and I are in, Mike, is that there's so much received wisdom that's curated a little bit, but the, fun, the underlying assumptions aren't questioned. And so I've been on the receiving and giving end of this. I'm guilty of being on the giving end of it. I'm not really satisfied with operating that way anymore. And I'm not accusing anybody of operating that way either, but it's a general problem. So something sounds like a good idea, Someone out there in the world tries and it doesn't work. Why? Probably because it wasn't a good idea for them. So I'm trying to answer one question, how do implementers become advisors? Meaning how do people who get told what to do move into the position where they provide advice or guidance mm -hmm. or uh, strategy? Not everybody wants to make that transition. That's fine. I want to help those who do. And I find that there's not a lot of uh, really reliable evidence-based guidance about how to make that transition. People figure it out for themselves, which is awesome. I just, I want to collect 
using basic research tools, things like interviewing people or really just trying to measure things that haven't been measured in a very simple way. I want to collect that information and make it available in an open way so that people can decide for themselves and uh, apply a, a little bit of scrutiny to what I've done and see if it makes sense to them. If so, they can make use of it. So that's, that's the motivation is that I, I think the industry of advice giving to folks out there is not doing a good enough job. And I think by being open about how we arrive at our conclusions, we can do a better job. Yeah. Transparency. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. Good idea. Um, so why did you decide to make a, a risk profile self-assessment? I always encourage freelancers to do that, to really find themselves and who they are. And a lot of times people don't even really know. They might have an idea, uh, but I didn't realize until I started taking self-assessments how much I categorized as a visionary. And I wouldn't have thought that. Um, so why did you decide to make a risk profile self-assessment and how important is it for freelancers and consultants to assess their risk? I think it's important. It gets back to two of the things we've touched on. One is knowing yourself, which we started out with. That's, I think, the foundation for deciding how you're going to specialize. And it gets back to me giving bad advice a few years ago, where the feeling that the, the sort of perspective I had on specialization was you should just go all the way with it. You should become hyper-specialized. You should be very entrepreneurial in your perspective on that. And I realized that was me applying my own perspective to those I was trying to help. And what the missing piece was understanding risk tolerance. In the world of financial um, investment advice, it's called your risk profile. It's a combination of your ability, to, your emotional comfort with risk, and your sort of physical ability to withstand some sort of loss. And that was a real inspiration for me when I, when I discovered that, because it was this sort of missing, um, missing link, so to speak, where... If you can tolerate a lot of risk, you can do things with specialization that folks who are less risk tolerant mm -hmm. cannot do. And that made, made me, helped me understand why some people can do these really impressive things with specialization and become world-class experts. And others just need to use it in a more restrained way. So what I do now is not a self-service tool. What I want to do is I take what I do now with clients and turn it into a self-service tool that anybody can use. So that's, that's what's going on with that risk profile self-assessment. Okay. And it hooks into what you're talking about, Mike, where just knowing yourself mm -hmm. and having things that you don't see reflected back to you can be so valuable. Yeah. What I use it for is I learn where my weaknesses are and it's surprising how you probably didn't know until you take a test. Somebody has to tell you where your weaknesses are and then you, you outsource that part of your job um, to where your weaknesses are because you want to keep your focus and all of your attention and time on the stuff that you do the best that where your passion lies within, right? Uh, so that's what I use it for. But I can imagine somebody like you would use it if, if a client came to you and said, you know, I want to buy this business or I have this idea and then you take a self-assessment and you say, well, perhaps this idea or this, this direction you want to go in your career isn't the best for you or maybe this is a perfect fit because of your self-assessment revealed that or this, you know, something like that. It's incredibly valuable feedback. Yeah. Well, how can I, our listeners learn more about you? I find your, your niche of, of positioning and self-assessment fascinating, um, and you do quite a good job of it. So I'd like my, our followers to be able to, to find you online. Give us all your social media that you're active on, your website, all that good stuff. Well, um, I'm going to give you one thing because I think it's the most valuable thing, which is if folks went to positioningcrashcourse.com, they would sign up for an email course if they wanted to. And this would be just a deeper dive into some of the things we've talked about. So I think if folks, you know, find this stuff interesting, it's a way to a dip a toe in for free and just explore a little more deeply how this might help them and benefit their business. So Sounds good. So that's crashcourse.com. Okay. Got it. I'll put that in the show notes as well. Thank you so much for uh, joining us, Philip. And uh, hopefully we can do this again soon, right? My pleasure. All right. Talk to you soon.